You're watching this Todd McShay mock draft reaction here on our newly launched NFL Draft YouTube channel by Chat Sports. Happy to have you guys here. We're going to keep putting videos on this channel, and the faster we get to 1,000, the more we can even do. So make sure you're subscribed here and enjoy our Todd McShay mock draft. A trade to get things going here for the Chicago Bears, and Indianapolis jumps up to that number one overall pick in exchange for a fourth, the fourth overall pick. A second, number 35 overall, a 2023 fifth rounder, and maybe a first rounder next year. Uh, don't be a coward, Todd. Put the actual picks in. I promise it'll be okay. The maybe is, I think, actually needed to make this happen since other teams, I think, would be bidding. But in that scenario, the value is really, really proper there. So include the first. We're cooking with gas there. Colts take Bryce Young out of Alabama. Uh, the... the uh, the bios are now going to say he's a 200 plus pounds. Not going to play there. I'd say it's probably more in the 190s. He was in the 170s, by the way, at Alabama down the stretch last year. But he fits perfectly what Shane Steichen wants to do. CJ Stroud, number two overall out of Ohio State. The Texans need a quarterback. As long as they like at least two of them, stamp at it too. And take whichever guy falls with it. It's Bryce Young, Stroud, or hell, maybe Richardson or a Will Levis. Number three, Will Anderson. We'll talk about Jalen Carter later on. In light of the situation involving Carter, I think for now, Anderson makes a lot of sense. Plus, they need an edge rusher, so it's kind of an obvious if you're going to bar a trade down, take the best defensive player, one will be there for them. Another trade, the Bears trade down a second time. They get number seven overall, a third and a fourth rounder. Now, Todd also put in, maybe they get the second round pick from the Raiders, which is possible. Again, I say pick one. Trade value chart-wise, the updated one is pretty good for the third and the fourth. It's a slight slide down. And I think for the Bears' perspective at that point, unless they really want Jalen Carter, maybe the guy would be there for them at number seven. Bears might ask for more. Not sure they get as much as they're going to get if they trade down from that number one overall pick. The Raiders, meanwhile, ooh, Anthony Richardson. Uh, athletic testing-wise, you're talking about one of the best athletes factoring in size to ever play the position. The footwork, the accuracy, the hips, they just they flip open too much. It leads to passes being high. Has to be figured out there. There's a lot of upside. The mobility, I think, might give him time to work on that upside. I'm not sure Josh McDaniels is the right guy to maximize it from a head coach perspective. OC, oh, different conversation. But Richardson, number four. So would you draft him this early? Would you take Anthony Richardson inside? Let's say at least the top ten. Oh, not even the top five conversation. This top ten conversation. Why for yes and for no? Go vote for me in the comment section. Number five, Tyree Wilson out of uh, Texas Tech. Covering from that uh, broken bone in his foot. The bigger body guy, maybe Seattle thinks he's their new uh, Michael Bennett along the defensive line. Christian Gonzalez tested the way we hoped he was going to. Off the charts, good. He's number six, the Lions there. He and, in theory, Jeffrey Akuda, good combo. Bears finally make a pick, Peter Skaronsky. Also make note, no Jalen Carter yet, which I find uh, very interesting from that standpoint. The arm length is a, is a concern. 32 and a quarter inches is l significantly less by almost a full inch than Rashawn Slater. That will raise some red flags. Maybe he's a guard. Maybe he's a tackle. But he's damn good at playing football. Now, if you want daily NFL videos, this is your one-stop shop. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. Free videos multiple, multiple times per day every single day. And if you love just the NFL draft, Make sure you go subscribe to our NFL Draft YouTube channel. We'll be putting more content up on there, ad-free, by the way. YouTube.com slash chat NFL. Free NFL Draft videos for all 32 NFL teams. We got to get to 1,000 and get keep growing that so we can do more videos and I can do even more draft stuff. Wouldn't that be fun? Hit that subscribe button right now, YouTube.com slash chat NFL. That link will be in the comments and the description of today's video. Here's a big riser, Nolan Smith, uh, all the way up to number eight. Then I got to go back and check Todd's last mock draft and see uh, exactly where he went. But Smith tested great. Uh, the lack of production is still there. But among your just overall draft winners, he was certainly one of the biggest ones. Number nine, Will Levis out of Kentucky, who... Ah, look, he is who he is. There's concerns. There's upside. Panthers, I would be surprised if they did not 
take a quarterback. He goes number nine to Carolina. Bijan Robinson uh, goes much earlier than in McShay's last draft. That was 22nd overall. He goes number 10 this time around. Uh, I, by the way, pulled it up there. Nolan Smith was not in Todd's last mock draft. Now he's a top 10 pick. He's always been in our mock drafts. Bijan at 10. Positional value is a big red flag there. Everyone loves mocking Paris Johnson to Tennessee, and it just makes sense. Uh, they, they need a left tackle. Johnson's the best pure left tackle, not including Skaronsky there. Easy player team fit there. Number 12, here's Jalen Carter. And I think in the end he ends up going earlier. I don't think teams know how much they should be concerned about this point uh, after the charge of reckless driving and, and racing in connection with the crash that killed uh, one of his teammates and a recruiting staff member. The nice part is in terms of the NFL is there there's time to get things sorted out here. There were concerns about him just being a 21-year-old and being a, the little bit of immaturity that comes along with it. This was not known by NFL teams the, before the news broke. So figuring out where he goes is still kind of up in the air. So who will end up drafting Jalen Carter? Let me know in the comments section what team, maybe it's still the Bears, you think ends up with Carter in the 2023 NFL Draft. All right, Broderick Jones, the Jets. We've made that mock draft pick many a time before. Uh, tackle help still an area of concern. Now, hey, maybe this pick gets dealt for the, for the Aaron Rodgers, in which case, that eh, changes. Number 14, Quinton Johnston, uh, the wide receiver from TCU. Uh, he's a weird prospect where he plays a bit more finesse than his size suggests he should, but I think he's still in that wide receiver one conversation. Michael Mayer from Notre Dame tested the way I thought he was going to, which is above average, good, but not elite. That's okay. He is really good at playing football, and that should not be overlooked. Devin Witherspoon, one of my guys this year. Uh, the pro day comes along quickly, by the way, for Witherspoon. If he runs, he tweaked his hamstring uh, leading up to the combine, did not run there. A little skinny, awesome production, though, at Illinois this year. I love his fit in the mid part of round one. Emmanuel Forbes, <laughs> this is tough. Um... McShay has him flying up his board, which he did run a 4-3-5, which is awesome. He also weighed in at 166, which the history of 6-1 corners who are 166 pounds, it just doesn't exist. In a draft full of size outliers, here's another one in Forbes. Uh, I'm a little surprised this pick was not Joey Porter Jr. That doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, but Forbes, if you're okay with the weight, the ball skills and, and length is really appealing. My comp friend, by the way, Slender Man. Actually, that's just, he, he is so, there's, he's so skinny. All right, number 18, Lucas Van Ness. I don't mind this one. Um, I think there's some, you have some flexibility of inside outside here where base sets, it's Hutchinson and Van Ness on the outside. Your third down package, it's Hutchinson and Van, er, Hutchinson and James Houston with Van Ness inside. I think that could be a really nice fit for the Detroit Lions. Joey Porter Jr., there's my guy. Uh, I think he should be a top 17 almost locked because if you're Pittsburgh and you don't have a corner you got to take JPJ I mean, that's just that's organizational malpractice to not number 20 Miles Murphy out of Clemson so it's Tyree Wilson and Miles Murphy in back-to-back -back picks I if, if you say so uh, I'm not sure they double dip at edge quite like that I, I would wonder if you, they look elsewhere in with their other round one pick Jordan Addison out of USC eh, didn't have the best combine a little bit skinny not the best testing, but he's a good route runner. He gets open. Um, I still like him a lot, even if there's maybe not a true number one wide receiver. Now, Jackson Smith and Jigba blew up the short agility drills, which makes sense. That's how he gets open so often. He's a fantastic route runner, and the athletic ability is a big reason why there. Did not run the 40 because it wasn't going to be a very good time. He's, he's quick. He's not fast, but I think he did help himself overall. Who do you think was the biggest NFL Combine winner? I got a name we're about to get to that I think fits that mold. Let me know in the comments section what you think, though, right now. Number 23, Deontay Banks out of Maryland. <laughs> he tested so good. Uh, you throw in the really good uh, coverage numbers at Maryland this year. I, I think he's cornerback four over Emmanuel Forbes. We'll see what happens come draft night. Darnell Wright, uh, the pitch here was they're going to let Jamal or Jawan Taylor leave in free agency. Kind of think we're forgetting about Walker a little, a little bit, but I do think Wright could sneak in the back end of round one. He did help himself athletically at the combine. 
Number 25, Zay Flowers. I do worry about fitting Flowers and Wando together. It's a very small, wide receiving crew, uh, crew. But of your receivers, this is probably the next best one, especially since Jalen Hyatt has only really played slot at Tennessee. Dalton Kincaid to the Cowboys at number 26 overall. Um, Dallas can look for a pass catcher. If the receivers are gone, they could very well go tight end. And the tight end class is loaded. Kincaid is probably going to be a top 25 player on their board, so there's value. But it's a loaded tight end class. Do you really want to take a premium pick on that group? A thing they haven't done in a very long time since David LaFleur was the pick. Number 27, Keon White. Another premium pick on an edge with Vaughn Miller and Gregory Russo. It's, it's a lot. Um, the pitch was best player available, so I guess it's better than, than a, a running back if you're Buffalo. Anton Harrison from Oklahoma. Uh, the strength I have some concern about here, uh, the production's really good. The athletic ability is good. Can he play on the right side? I think they're going to keep John Williams at left tackle. Lyle Collins might not be back. I can get on board with that for Cincinnati. I think this is about the back end of round one or the round two ranges where Harrison should go. We'll see if he actually does, though, in the end. Brian Brzee, look, it's, a, it's all upside. Athletic traits are special. The production has not been. Gamble on him at 29? I can live with that. Here's Kalijah Kansi, the unbelievable 40-yard dash time, 467. Fantastic athlete. He's just small. Not just in, like, his height and his weight, but in his arm length. And that's a concern. Four teams, it is. That's why he's there at 30. I mean, he's not going to go top 10 as much as speed, I don't think. But alongside uh, what Philadelphia has in Jordan Davis, that pairing could actually work really well uh, in Philadelphia. Derek Hall out of Auburn. I keep an eye on offensive tackle here, too. Maybe the Chiefs trade up for an offensive tackle. Don't rule that out. But Frank Clark's going to go. you got to pair someone with George Karloftis. I think it's a little early for Hall, me personally, but it's a solid edge class. And 31, you know, you're taking a second-round guy in the end. Grade Todd McShay's mock draft for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Get those votes in. Oh, we break down some other prospects. He slandered, or is it libel? It's libel. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't know what it is anymore. No one knows what it is. In the comments, actually, grade the mock draft. A, B, C, D, or F. Other top NFL draft prospects uh, McShay did not include here. Uh, it is liable, by the way. Uh, Darnell Washington, who I, I'm just a big fan of his. Jalen Hyatt didn't run as fast as people were hoping for, uh, but speed kills, and he's got speed. Brian Branch, Osiris Torrance are two of my guys, and I think should go in round one. If Branch is out of the first round, I think someone's making a mistake. And Drew Sanders, probably your top off-ball linebacker in this year's class.